Well, ridiculous timeline question. Uh, when is Cloud Opus uh, 3.5 coming out? Uh, not giving an exact date, uh, but you know, they're, they're, uh, as, you know, as far as we know, the plan is still to have a Claude 3.5 Opus. Are we going to get it before GTA 6 or no? Like Duke Nukem Forever. Duke so Nukem, what was that I, game? That, there was some game that was delayed 15 years. Right. Was that Duke Nukem Forever? Yeah. And I think GTA is now just releasing trailers. It, you know, it's only been three months since we released the first Sonnet. <laughs> Yeah, it's inc the incredible pace of the, release. It, it just it just tells you about the pace. Yeah, the expectations for when things are going to come out. So, uh, what about four O? So, how do you think about sort of as these models get bigger and bigger about versioning and also just versioning in general? Why Sonnet three five updated with the date? Why not Sonnet three point six? Yeah, which a lot of people actually, calling it. naming is actually an interesting challenge here, right? Yeah. Because I think a year ago most of the model was pre-training, and so you could start from the beginning and just say, okay, we're going to have models of different sizes, we're going to train them all together, and you know we'll have a a family of naming schemes, and then we'll put some new magic into them, and then you know we'll have the next the next generation. Um, the trouble starts already when some of them take a lot longer than others to train, right? That already messes up your time time a little bit. But as you make big improvements in as you make big improvements in pre-training, uh, then you suddenly notice, oh, I can make better pre-trained model and that doesn't take very long to do. And but you know, clearly it has the same, you know, size and shape of previous models. Uh, uh, so I think those two together, as well as the timing timing issues, any kind of scheme you come up with, uh, you know, the reality tends to kind of frustrate that scheme, right? It t tend, tends to kind of break out of the break out of the scheme. It's not like software where you can say, oh, this is like, you know, 3.7, this is 3.8. No, you have models with different, different trade-offs. You can change some things in your models. You can train, you can change other things. Some are faster and slower at inference. Some have to be more expensive. Some have to be less expensive. And so I think all the companies have struggled with this. Yeah. Um, I think we did very you know, I think think we were in a good good position in terms of naming when we had Haiku, Sonnet, yeah, and Opus. Great, great start. And we're we're trying to maintain it, but it's not it's not it's not perfect. Um, so we'll 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 try and get back to the simplicity, but it it, it um, uh, just the 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 nature of the field. I feel like no one's figured out naming. It's somehow a different paradigm from like normal software, and 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 so we we just. N none of the companies have been perfect at it. Um, it's something we struggle with surprisingly much relative to you know how <laughs> relative to how trivial it is to, to you know for the, the 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 grand science of training the models. So from the user side, the user experience of the updated Sonnet three five is just different than the previous uh, June twenty twenty four Sonnet three five. It would be nice to come up with some kind of labeling that embodies that because people talk about Sonnet three five. But now there's a different one, and so how do you refer to the previous one and the new one? And it, it uh, when there's a distinct improvement, it just makes conversation about it uh, just challenging. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely think this question of there are lots of properties of the models that are not reflected in the benchmarks. Um, I, I think I think that's that's definitely the case, and everyone agrees. And not all of them are capabilities. Some of them are, you know, models can be polite or brusque. They can be, uh, you know, uh, very reactive, or they can ask you questions. Um, they can have what what feels like a warm personality or a cold personality. They can be boring, or they can be very distinctive, like Golden Gate Claude was. Um, and we have a whole, you know, we have a whole team kind of focused on, I think we call it Claude character. Uh, Amanda leads that team and we'll, we'll talk to you about that, but it's still a very inexact science. Um, and, and often we find that models have properties that we're not aware of. The, the fact of the matter is that you can, you know, talk to a model 10,000 times and there are some behaviors you might not see. Uh, just like, just like with a human, right? I can know someone for a few months and, you know, not know that they have a certain skill or not know that there's a certain side to them. And so I think, I think we just have to get used to this idea and we're always looking for better ways of testing our models to, to demonstrate these capabilities and, and, and also to decide which are, which are the, which are the personality properties we want models to have and which we don't want to have that itself. The normative question is also super interesting.